join up now. Young people are joining from all over the UEA. Join the first Royal Aerospace Marine Squadron and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. We have the ships. We have the weapons. We need Marines. Like Trooper Sherpain. And like Centurion Whole Armor. They're doing their part. Are you? We need you all. Service guarantees citizenship. Want to know more? The First Royal Aerospace Squadron is a Marine Squadron first. We have a growing group and would like you to be a part of something great. We are a group who is going to enjoy being citizens and we will be performing all sorts of lawful activities, not just the military ones. We will explore, mine, salvage, carry cargo, escort ships, and we will need shipboard marines to defend our fleet and to be ready to board enemy vessels. Want to know more? Visit our recruiter at 1RAS.engine.com Dot com. Service guarantees citizenship. Hello everybody, this is Mr. Everything coming at you with another Filling the Void. The uh, show is going to be done a little bit differently this time. What we're going to do is, uh, since my co-hosts were unable to attend, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run some Arena Commander for you. I'll fly the Gladius, and in the Gladius what we'll do is I'm going to change out some weapons a little bit. So let me go ahead and get that set up. And in the meantime, while we're doing the uh, Arena Commander, what I'll also be doing is talking about the uh, filling the Void show. So I'll be filling the gaps in the fighting with the actual show uh, filling the Void, if that makes sense. All right. So let me go ahead and get logged in. Alright, I'm launching the game right now. Uh, I suspect it's going to be pretty fast. I suspect we'll be able to get uh, through a match pretty quickly, and I'll have talked about everything that I was basically wanting to talk about with my co-hosts. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about what uh, I'm doing as Mr. Everything, what I'm doing uh, over the last few weeks um, while getting ready for Star Citizen to come out, you know, waiting for the... Uh, waiting for the social module, the first person shooter module, um, waiting for all of that. But uh, right now, what I'm playing is um, War Thunder, a bit of World of Warplanes. I'm playing uh, Arena Commander, of course. I'm playing, uh, uh, um, what's the other game? Mass Effect, I'm playing some of that. Um, basically, I'm playing a bunch of computer games, and I'm looking forward to maybe getting involved in a game called World of Warships. Uh, that's a slow-paced World War II battleship, cruiser, destroyer, aircraft carrier type sh type game where you're in a 10-kilometer map, basically, and you're lobbing shells at each other. And, yeah, launching torpedoes and stuff like that. I'm kind of looking forward to maybe getting involved in that. Um, all right, now around the around the world, we've come around the news in the Star Citizen. 
We've got uh, 1.1 came out. And now, when I say news, I mean the last two weeks because it's been how long we, since we've had this last show. So uh, 1.1 came out, all right? 1.1, where you had to completely uninstall the game and reinstall from scratch because of the new patcher. My understanding was because of the new patcher, and they fixed a lot of the problems, but whenever they tried to overwrite older patches or whatever, it was still giving them the same type of issues. So they figured that just completely uninstalling everything, reinstalling everything was going to fix it. Well, guess what? It worked fine for me. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, now, uh, just in the recent 10 for the chairman, uh, during the sneak peek, they showed a little cut of what Terra, what one of the one of the villas on Terra might look like. Uh, it, it, to me, it looked incomplete, like it wasn't being, like it wasn't finished. Everybody was like drooling all over it, but to me, it just it didn't look finished yet, um, which uh, kind of what I expect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my Gladius. What we're going to do is we're going to put. I think we've got everything put on it. We've got the Sledge Twos gimbaled, and we have the uh, Scorpion. 215 it is gimbaled. Let's go with some missiles. Everything missiled up. Everything's ammoed up. Okay, good. And uh, so I've been taking advantage of Wreck. Wreck's another thing. Uh, oh, that's that's hot news. Okay, we're talking about just regular news. We got uh, pushback in the social module. Uh, you know, the they said it was going to be out in March. Well, they decided it better be out in April. Okay, let me go ahead and pick my match here while I'm thinking about it. Let me do a multiplayer match. I do a vandal swarm. Okay, and then uh, what else? And so, because they're pushing back the social module, I suspect they're going to push back the FPS module also. So you can't have the FPS module without multiplayer interaction. So, uh, and the social module is all about that testing the inner you know, teaming up inside your hangar or inside of a uh, Stanton or wherever. So, we'll see. And then uh, some hot news. Hot news. This this week or the last couple of weeks, um, the Sledge. The Sledge, uh, they said they tweaked it, modified it, made it more in line with their other guns. But what they've really done is they've made a pretty powerful shooting gun. Very little energy drain off your ship. Doesn't overheat very often and it's only size one so uh they gave it the best of all worlds but i'm sure that'll be tweaked and that'll be fixed in the future uh the vanguard has gone on sale uh 250 dollars for a long range fighter uh they call it a long range multi-role fighter but uh i had i had a little video that i was going to show you where uh uh, Zahn and I even actually took a little time to uh, review the videos and we saw that uh, the stat page, the technical specs page, and the video were not in line with each other. None of them said the exact same thing. You could see that there was extra missiles uh, coming out of the bottom of the engines, the engine nacelles, which we presume were torpedoes, and then the missile racks that are above the engines inside of the engines, but like above the wings, looked like they might have anywhere between six and eight missiles per, and this is per the video. And then if you look at the technical specs, it shows that they have like four, two racks of missiles, or maybe it's four, if they have four, two racks, yeah, I don't know. I just love that Betty. Okay, let's get a little closer.
Everything's green. Okay, but what we're doing now is I guess we're waiting for other players because we can't start without them. Okay, so while we're waiting for other players, uh, what else? Um, oh, in 10 for the Chairman, or yeah, I think it was 10 for the Chairman, he mentioned, Chris Roberts mentioned, had a quote coming back up. He had a question about are there going to be any biological ships, you know, like from Farscape or, well, I don't remember the other one. But uh, he said his answer was yes, but not in the first release. So that tells me there's going to be aliens coming down the line, down the pipes, that are going to have ships that are biological. And that'll be, that'll be really cool. Uh, okay, and then there's supposedly these four major, uh, yeah, four major ships coming out in the near future that are going to be concept sales probably pretty soon. You're looking at Crusader Industries has the Genesis, which is the Starliner. I can't wait for that. Uh, then there's the Anvil is making the Crucible, which is their repair ship. That's the one I guess goes around repairing ships on the front lines. And then uh, Misk is creating, well, not only the Hull series, you know, the Hull A, B, C, D, and E, but they're also making the Endeavor Research Lab ship, which is pretty cool. And then uh, I wanted to say something about Traveler, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, well, the lab ship from Traveler was basically a disc uh, or a donut it, where you would walk a lot like 2001 where you walk around the outside edge of the of the ship when your head is facing always to the center. Yeah, but it's a big donut that you actually have hallways that go all the way around. That's the lab ship from Traveler. So, and I, if it's anything like that, that would be, that's super cool because they had like a disc and then a docking ring went out to the center and then a ship docked directly in the middle. It was pretty cool. But they have another one out called the Ar Argo Transport Ship and it is rumored to be able to carry a Javelin Destroyer inside of its cargo hold. So that, that's a massive ship. Even though if you, if you go back and watch any of my, um, I'll be showing up. Dang it. I might have to do a single player. Uh, if you go back and watch one of my YouTube videos, I don't remember which world it was, um, but Misk had a factory on this planet that um, shipped star bearers out of system to other systems, but they shipped them inside cargo carrier and they put like five of them inside this so i'm thinking that if an argo can carry five five um starfarers it probably could carry a javelin so the argo might be the ship in in question that they're talking about all right i'm getting out of this i can't wait that long back to here and what we'll do is we'll just start a single player match Um, okay, and then another thing that I've noticed is pretty hot news right now is that you're making anywhere between a thousand and six thousand, even more, wreck in a match, right? Uh, even in Vandal Swarm. And the ships are only like five to twelve thousand wreck. So after about two matches, you've got enough wreck to buy a ship if you're any good. I mean, if you're an average player, I guess. Two or three matches will get you a new ship in the rec system. So that's that's good in a way because it allows players that don't really play that often to at least be able to get, oh, nice. That allows you to kind of, um, if you don't play that often, at least it allows you to get a chance to spend your rec, you know. Uh, and, and, it, and it means that there's no need to really grind for wreck because you're going to get it. Uh, okay, just trying to remember what I'm doing here. There we 
you go. Um, some missiles are like 1500 so you know after a after a one match you've got enough to like replace your is it Sisi? Centauri Centauri system yeah that's it that sounds right because I remember doing a uh, I remember doing a uh, star charts on the Centauri system um, guns you know 800 to a thousand something like that so but Ben was saying that they realized that the rec system is way out of balance and they're giving too much rec away. So um, they've decided they're going to tweak it in the next patch. So we're probably not going to get as much rec as we had been getting. So that's so take advantage of it now while you can. Uh, so what I did was I went out and bought Omni Sky Sixes. I bought Sledge Twos. I bought gimbal mounts to go on various gimbal hard points and so now I have this uh, but luckily this week it's a Gladius uh, free to uh, free fly week so uh, that's what I'm flying right now okay uh, now let's go back a, a step uh, you know that I did a you did I, I did a uh, walkthrough of my retaliator and there's a lot of people that think that the central room right behind the elevators is the bomb control or the ordnance control room or what have you. Um, it's not. It's not it. And I, ne I never. Did, I never did think it was that. And I don't know where these people had got that impression or got that idea that, that it was going to be like that because nobody's ever said that. So, I just. I just said, well, luckily we're going to be able to customize these controls to what we want them to be anyway and I'm going to have an engineer position there and they're they're going to be dealing with my engine output shields and stuff like that that's that's where they're going to be and uh, so that was a personal call on mine but then just recently in the latest jump point they have all these concept pictures some of them I've never seen and uh, they do a description they would do like a walkthrough description of what the retaliator is and what all the positions are and stuff like that and they specifically say that that's the engineer's position and I was like oh, I feel so vindicated because <laughs> I knew it was you know but but who knows they might have changed it you know so I was just but I said screw it I'm gonna make it my engineer's position but no it's 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 supposed to be the engineer's position and that's that's pretty cool um, now let's talk about the pipe system a little bit okay while we're waiting for this match to load I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, the pipe system I'm gonna bring it over here let's switch cameras here okay now I don't know if you can see my mouse can you see my mouse yeah I think you can uh, this is the pipe system or the I should, uh, pipe diagram that, ex that shows off the pipe system I want you to understand that um, a pipe is not always a physical pipe okay it's not necessarily a tube of metal you know that's not always a pipe the, a pipe is just a, a highway, a road, a direction that something takes to get from point A to point B. Um, and the in in this diagram, you can you can understand that some of these pipes are not just are not physical pipes; they're like wires, uh, like the main power pipe yeah it could be a conduit with some serious power lines inside of it sure thing the info pipe all that is is an ethernet cable you know or some some internet information cable a heat pipe that probably has water cooling going on that's probably or some gel or some other high-tech cooling avionics pipe is also going to be a data pipe it's just going to be specialized to the uh, avionics and then you've got the battery power pipe which probably just more power lines um, let's see what's going on with this game why is it 
Okay, you do. Okay, I'm reloading it. Probably having to go back to the hangar. Okay, so so having taken a look at that uh, that um, pipe chart, right? Every item that you control with some kind of avionics, flight control, data, uh, that that has to have some kind of computer line going to it. Then you're going to have some things need to be cooled off, like engines and thrusters and weapons. So they're going to have a coolant pipe going to it, either gel or water or whatever. Uh, now, they might not have that going to it. They might have just heat sinks built into the gun itself, and those heat sinks would be considered the cooling pipe, even though they don't actually have any pipes running to that. Okay, so don't don't get don't get locked into thinking that each pipe has physical pipes running from point A to point B. That's not necessarily the case. Okay, and then you have uh, the radar. It's going to not only need power, but it's going to need the info, and it'll also feed into your uh, avionics. And uh, in the chart, it says it actually goes into the heat pipe, too. So I'm not sure why the radar would need a heat pipe. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure about that. I don't understand. And Lumavox, that question about the Gladius, um, I had mixed feelings about it. It's okay, but uh, I really have to get used to using it. Wait, did I go Spectrum public match? That's not what I wanted. This is not going to be anybody to join with me. Right, it, it, some of the pipes are wiring, but then again, some pipes are actual physical pipes, like um, the fuel pipe. There's going to be fuel that goes from point A to point B. Uh, there's going to be um, okay. Let's the hull. The, let's let's talk about components of the ship first, and if they have any pipes going to them. The hull of the ship. Believe it or not, it might have a cooling pipe going to it. The reason why it would have that is you see like maybe heat sinks are built into the hull and that transmits or that allows the drawing of the heat out of the ship, right? So so the hull might actually have a, a pipe going to it. Then you got the power plant. Of course it's going to get hot, so it's going to have to have heat. It's going to generate power, so it has to have power lines coming out of it. It's going to require fuel, so it's going to have fuel lines going into it. And uh, will it need info? It still will need info because it, you need to you need to know about what your uh, power plant's doing in on your HUD or what have you. And will it have avionics going to it? Yes, because <laughs> you'll need to like you know thrust. Well, power plant? Yeah, you still have to control it. Oh, we're in. I love the sound of Aegis flight control system. Yeah, and avionics. Uh, what's that really? I mean, that's the IFCS. It's the computer that controls how your ship flies in space. I should concentrate to what I'm doing, but you know, hey, it's hard. Oh, 
That's one way to take him out. <laughs> I should have matched velocity. Not even th even then, I probably would have still hit him. Okay, I won't be at 100 velocity again. It's too many collisions at 100. Uh, another thing, shields. Shields has got to have like power, of course. It's going to have to have avionics because you have to be able to control it to go up and down. It's got to have a data, so feed data to your HUD and things like that. Um, and cooling. I would assume the shield will generate some kind of heat. Get out of my way. keep forgetting that those pips are not exactly where your rounds go. I've reverted back to mouse control. This is still the first wave gone through almost all my ammo. Contact. 
Tarak. Did he say kill? Okay. You know, how do you fly through that, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm hitting something. It's not good to black out when you're in the asteroids. Have I not even finished wave two? <laughs> I lost two ships already. It's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. That's me trying to do three things at one time. Okay. Concentrate now. Not that.
Look at that map. Is that not beautiful? Yeah, I believe it's been pushed back another month. What? That's why I hate the gladius. We'll do one more. I'll continue on with the pipe discussion. I'm trying to get out of this match or we'll be out of the match. I guess I could hit retry. All right, I should have been able to hit retry. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. I could have pressed retry. <laughs> oh, goodness. Sorry, guys. Going back to the hangar, then going back to the game. Now, okay, some of the other things that pipes might affect. Uh, we got intakes. We kind of briefly kind of hinted over that, but uh, those are directly attached to the heat. Um, and also fuel. It's what collects supposedly the hydrogen from space to fuel your power plant. Now it's not going to it's not going to provide you with enough fuel to use quantum travel or anything like that, but it will provide you with enough fuel to limp around and maybe get someplace where you can land and then um all right yeah. hey zon thanks appreciate that oh we'll drone some again even though Drones don't ever do anything for you. <laughs> okay, what's another one? Uh, thrusters. Yeah, the thrusters. They need coolant, right? They need coolant. They need fuel. They need uh, avionics. So basically, I really don't really need to go through every single aspect of the ship and tell you. But what basically the pipes are, are um, the way the game reflects or simulates the way you communicate with each of the different items. So they might model in like a power line, but they might not model it in. They might just have it in the programming code that this actually controls this and this controls that. And then when that item gets destroyed or an item in between gets destroyed, then it might have to reroute it through another item. But eventually, if you get enough of your items destroyed, then you will not be able to communicate from point A to point B because that basically that pipe has been cut. Or if it takes enough damage and you let's say you get your 
cooling pipe damaged, then the uh, weapon will start overheating faster because it doesn't have any of the coolant going to it anymore. Uh, if it loses, maybe the power pipe gets cut. So then now you've lost the use of that item because you don't have power going to it. Or if the, let's say, avionics or the one of the command pipes gets just damaged, now it might be locked firing in a specific area. That might be just physical damage also. But it could be that it does. it's not getting the message to turn. So all of that's actually modeled in Star Citizen, which I'm actually pretty impressed why, by. That's what the egg said. And they're always coming from the sunlight. Which isn't really sun, that's more like lava or the core is exposed. <laughs> the sun is back over there. Yeah, 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 taking fire. I'm gonna do my best not to have a collision this time. going on? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's it. That's it for the show then. <laughs> we just locked up. So it, it realized that I was going to actually do pretty good in this match. So it decided, screw it. We're not going to let Mr. Everything actually get any more kills. Chop. <laughs>
Yeah, so uh, I understand this This isn't like the normal uh, filling a void where we have uh, co-hosts on and they're talking and we're discussing about certain uh, aspects of the game and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, we just didn't, I, my co-host didn't show up. So I uh, just wanted to go ahead and continue on, on my own. So uh, I appreciate everyone that has come out. Uh, Zon, appreciate you donating. And uh, what I'm planning on doing now is probably switching over to a new game. Uh, I just downloaded it. There's a free weekend, uh, Soldiers of War or something like that. Um, I might play that a little bit. I'm, I've been playing a little War Thunder. I've also been playing a little bit of World of Warplanes. So, uh, okay, where is it at? 